Hey guys, it's Alexei from Ace5 Studios and we're recording a user interface video uh, for Cinema 40, how to customize things. First I'll show you how to add buttons and other parts of the interface and then I'll show you how I customize mine to maximize my workspace. As you can see right now, I'm on a 1080p screen and it's because I'm working from my laptop so I've been doing more of this recently because before I was on a 4K 15 inch screen I didn't really need to customize that much because I couldn't be spread out but now I'm being way more efficient. So firstly, let's start the easiest stuff is how to add buttons up here. So first we're going to need to press Shift F12 and we'll get this customized commands menu. And the first thing we should probably add is this menu to the top of because we're going to be using it a lot. So let's drag this guy up here, customize commands. You could also find that instead of typing customize, you could just press the shortcut. Like this way you can check if a shortcut is used for something. So this is a very useful place. If you want to see if the G shortcut is used for something, you can see all the things that G shortcut is used for. Um, so, you know, you can try and and also that's a sequence of shortcuts, but I'll go over that later. So, and the other one we want to save a startup layout. This one will be next to it. So this is the button we press to save the layout so that it starts up with this layout. So we can close this now. And so, oh yeah, that's right. The next thing we want to do is how to remove buttons from the layout. To remove buttons, you have to right click and go customize palettes. You'll see the, the customize command comes in, but also everything around here, these little blue lines. To get rid of an icon, you just double click on it and it's gone. So let's bring it back, save, start up layout. There you go. And that's the thing. So uh, first thing I change is the icon size here. It's too small, it takes up too much, I mean too big, it takes up too much room on my screen. So I go right click, icon size, and medium icons. And this one as well, right click, icon size, and medium icons. And these ones down here are totally fine if they're small. Obviously, use a preference, but this is what I like to do. Uh, next, I like to drag this guy over to the right in the middle here because, whoops, I use it way more over here than I do over there. And let's drag it up so that it just gets this interface. The next thing I do is I usually put this guy um, down here at the bottom and I scroll this down so it's a bit smaller. And here you can see these tabs. I don't like having them here, I like having the tabs, you can right click them and you can change them to where is it? Um, tabs, you can do top if you want. And for me that works a lot better. And then I drag the materials into one of these layers, I mean into the tabs. So then I have, you can drag them around with this little button here, you can move them where you want it. So this is how I, and then I have much more working space here. This is my own personal customization. Like these are the things that I like to do. And then let's hit this saver startup layout. And now you can see it says startup user. Um, so yeah, that's very important. Now, what else do we have in my list of viewing shortcuts? Uh, when you click on things, you will see little shortcuts here. If you don't see shortcuts here, that's because you need to go edit preferences and wait for it to load. And here it'll be show shortcuts and menus. If you turn it off, you'll see there's no more shortcuts. It's a bit cleaner, but then you don't know what the shortcuts are. So it's important to have that on. Next one. Oh yeah, you can also uh, move around panels. So we showed you here. And what you can do is you can actually save them. So you can, for example, you can right click and you can go new palette, right? And it's empty. And now I'm going to go shift F12 and we can go, for example, cube. We can drag that in there and then we can go, I don't know, IK something, create IK chain, drag that in there. And we can add, I don't know, just you can add scripts, whatever you want. Let's add the null object, convert to null command, all useful stuff. And then you can right click on these and you can also make, for example, show text. So show text. And let's make this guy change orientation so it's vertical. And also let's make the small icons because they're too big. And isn't that so much more convenient? And now you can save this palette. You can right click on this. Uh, a little gray button here and you can go save palette as and you save it somewhere and then you can just load it whenever you need it so that's very useful if you have you know, if you want to share them with people if you're moving interfaces it really helps uh, now the next thing about user interface is what do we want to do um, yeah sequential shortcuts this is really important uh, because cinema 40 shortcuts aren't just one button press or a button with a control out uh, modifier press you can actually have sequences of buttons. So for example, uh, it's a good idea to find a button on your keyboard that's not being used. In my case, it's the tilde button because I have an American keyboard. 
uh, but if you have uh, buttons from, if you have a, some kind of European keyboard, you probably have like some weird backslash apostrophe somewhere sitting next to your shift key that isn't getting used. So get that button, and now you can attach things to it. For example, I often have the null bound to tilde one. So I'll go null, and then I'll attach here, I'll press tilde and then one. So what happens now, I go assign. Now when I press tilde one, a null is created. And I can, for example, make circle be tilde two. So if I press circle and I go tilde two, oops, tilde two and I go assign. Now tilde two creates a circle. And you can also have these uh, sequential example. I have close project. Oops. Uh, I don't know why it's not a command. Did I forget what it's called? Um, <laughs> file. Oh, it's just close. Okay, so it's just a close command. Um, by default, it has its controller four. But you can you don't have when you press tilde tilde four for example that's my one I like if you press assign it'll replace it you can also just add it so now both of the shortcuts do the same thing so this way if someone else is using your computer it's not going to mess up uh, how you're working so now if I press tilde tilde four close it and so basically every layer gives you like tilde one gives you um, so tilde gives you these commands but if you go tilde you have another whole layer of commands so it's very convenient. Amazing. Um, the next thing that I also like to do is next project. I usually attach this to control tilde, which is, in my case, tilde is just above the tab. You can also put on control tab. Um, doesn't really matter. But see, it tells you that control tab is full screen mode. If you use full screen mode, then leave it. But otherwise, that's also a good thing to attach your next project to. Uh, in my case, with tilde, it's right next to the numeric line on the left. So it's above the tab key, below the escape keys. Um, so yeah, that's shortcuts. Let's see where we next. Uh, making tabs. Uh, if you want to make something into a tab, for example here, you can right click on this and you can go convert to tab, convert to tab. And now you have a tab and you can connect other ones. You can, for example, stick this in there if you want. You have customized commands and palettes. So basically it's all very, everything is very movable and changeable and it's just super convenient. Like just tabbing thing. Another one, you can fold stuff. If you control click on this little square here, you'll see it collapses down so it doesn't take up space. And then when you need it again, you just push it and it's back there. It's very convenient to bring things up and down when you're not using something. Uh, if you just click on it, you get options, you can close it out, you can rename this tab. You know, there's a whole bunch. It's all super handy. Um, compressed things. So well, here, yeah, if you want to, uh, let's drag this guy up. Um, let's <laughs> um, let's close this one, we don't need it. What you can actually do is right click and you can go fold palette. And then you have your buttons folded into one so it doesn't take up much space. But for some reason I can't control the size of these icons when I do this. They always go to original size. So if you have big icons, it kind of messes up. Like I don't know how to make, you know, smaller icons. Maybe it's impossible. Anyway, so that's that. And I think that's the most important parts of customizing your interface. Um, do I get to hit save or start up layout? And also you can save a lot, there's a lot of layouts here. So like there's a, you know, there's a modeling layout which has a bunch of you know, useful shortcuts which are all brought out. And you can make your own layouts. You can go window, customization, and you can save layout as, and it'll be a custom one. And you can call it whatever you want, your sculpting layout, your animating layout. It's all there. So yes. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any more questions, just ask. Um, I like to bring out a lot of stuff. And like, as you see in my tutorials, I have like MoGraph stuff here and dynamic shortcuts and, oh yeah, before I, <laughs> uh, what I forgot, yeah. I, I told you I moved this to the right. Okay, so I think I've covered everything. This is how I like my interface. Here usually I have like different shortcuts for just stuff you use often, just stuff you're always looking for, just come and drag it out. Uh, you can also, in the if you customize palettes, don't forget, you also have these separators. So if you want to, um, you have this icon separators and group separators. So you can, for example, fill space here. And then when you bring an icon in, it'll be in the middle. And then you can bring another fill space here, and it'll be splitting it up so you can have your icons not all on one side. So that's a very convenient little thing. And you can also do group separators, like you can bring it in and push them apart a bit for visual separation, like you have here. I think that pretty much covers everything. Hope you enjoyed this. Ask any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.